female athletes many times wants to have peak performance look great naked and be healthy at the same time but i've been like working out since i was like 15 um but like started running 2015 and then 2018 started getting into like more intense like crossfit um so then i was doing that for a while and then i started doing more like functional bodybuilding and so i got pretty lean i was like at my smallest like 120 but she's lost her period during that time and now she's working on regaining it back since then i haven't gotten a period and um however one thing she's been struggling with is she's noticing that maybe she's gaining more body fat than she would like to and this is a big mental struggle for her i probably gained maybe like five or seven pounds in the last maybe like three months um and i was like ooh. when you see yourself so lean and then you're like whoa um i was like a little concerned so i just don't know like what to do like i know it'll come back eventually maybe um but that's kind of like where i'm at let me tell you it's very common among especially female athletes this clip is from mind pump podcast and while guys are giving excellent advice and coaching to this young lady i have some other opinions and thoughts that i considered to be worthwhile sharing something to consider and just before we start let me put this disclaimer here i'm not a medical professional so everything that you hear here take as an opinion or something that you can use for your further research while working with a medical professional if this is your case as well enjoy quite common now um a I, I would say a functional medicine practitioner would be able to diagnose this much more specifically so but i'm going to speak from experience and based Please off do. of what you said and also i can tell I, I don't even see all of you i just see your traps and your shoulders you look really <laughs> lean do you know what your body fat percentage is at it was at eight when i was like 120 eight. uh obviously i know that's super lean for female that's not good because at a certain percentage you start losing your period i think it's under 13 uh right now i probably weigh like 130 ish yeah. um so it went up i don't know what exactly it is but i do you have abs have... sorry do you have abs a little bit they were like pretty defined before but now yeah. like i can see them but the, it's not like it was so that's why i was like freaking out like oh my god like what's happening yeah i'm gonna so again uh the body image issue like you had abs and now you are losing them and you are freaking out because you have that image probably something that she's been pursuing for quite a long period of time trying to get lean ripped we all love this crossfitter physique kind of shape muscular abs all over the place <laughs> you know but for some people it means making a trade-off with their health and it has consequences so like she mentioned being very low body fat is like kind of mental game here you can be lean but abir they, they still have abs but they are not as ripped they feel much greater and once they do that it seems like the picture clears for them and then they start valuing more their how they feel how they perform over the physique only i'm gonna make i'm gonna make a, a, a i'm gonna guess but i think i'm right on this you're just way too lean yeah. you're not eating enough this is very common with female <laughs> athletes now some women I, it sounds like you read when women start to lose their period, okay? Here's why women will lose their period, aside from any potential medical issue or hormonal issue, um, is too much stress, not enough sleep, too much exercise. Now, it's all in context, right? Too much exercise for one person can be not enough for a per another person, and et cetera, et cetera. But, and I know you read that after 13% is when women will lose their, their period. In my experience... I've seen women lose their period from being overtrained at almost any body fat percentage. And then just body fat percentage alone, I, I'd i say a decent chunk of the fit we, the women that I've trained will start to lose their period or become irregular below 16%. So 
So not all the way down to 13. In fact, I don't know any woman that I've ever worked with who didn't experience some irregularities getting below 13%. Okay. Katrina. Yeah. You. So here is the thing. Um, I have had women who I worked with who had about 30%. So they, they were quite all right and still losing their period because they they were too stressed in their personal life and stress is compound so if you are stressed and you on top of that you also put like a lot of exercise stress and you are training fasted that's a perfect mix or recipe for for some women to losing that period one point that i would like to also point out is that you might not lose period for your hormonal health and bone health and health overall to start deteriorating so it's not only about period some women can have period even when they are like quite unhealthy yeah you gained five pounds from eight percent so you're probably still below that that, that number um, you know, I'm afraid to ask, but what are your calories at? Do you know what your grams of fat and protein are at and what your calories are? Yeah. So I'm still working with that coach and I have spoken to, um, like a naturopath doctor and she's kind of been helping, but I feel like because I was on the pill for so long, uh, my hormones never really regulated on their own. So I feel like eventually it, it might come back, but she has me at uh, 150, uh, and I, I lowered it. I, I told her, I was like, I don't want to eat all these carbs. Now the question is why? Um, so, but she, like, this is what it is now. Uh, 150 grams of carbs, uh, 160, because I eat a lot of protein. Mm. And then um, uh, I think it's 90 grams of fat. Yeah. I think you're, I don't know how many calories that is. I can't. I it's like 2,095 uh, or something. Yeah, it's it's only 2,000. Well, yeah, that's the, not bad. The calories aren't bad, but you're too lean. Well, I would say the calories are still too low for a woman who is exercising um, as much as she is. She didn't specify exactly, but I can imagine that if she's so lean and um, I'm just connecting the dots with my previous experience. Uh, women who exercise daily about an hour doing like crossfit style of trainings or running and uh, lifting she has relatively low carbohydrate diet 150 grams 90 grams fed uh, 120 or more protein you know there is a point where protein will not save you many people who are trying to lose weight or trying the way keep the weight off and they are overemphasizing protein and they are doing that because they hope that it's like a safe macronutrient that i can eat as much protein as i want i will not be hungry i will not be gaining weight the truth is as long as you are in a caloric surplus you will be gaining weight whether you eat 200 grams of protein or 300 or just 100 grams uh, the calories matter there but so the first point calories matter and her calorie intake is pretty low like we know from the perspective of energy availability for a woman like that it would be approximately about 2400 calories just to maintain so i would say that she is in a deficit and her body is fighting that is why she also lost her period if you are not giving your energy if you are not giving your body energy your body will prioritize energy for activity over systems like reproductive system or reparation of muscle and other things so this is how it will adjust the caloric expenditure if you are not giving your body enough energy and then it will be burning that protein that you would be using for reparation of gastro <laughs> gastric um, tract and digestive organs and uh, reproductive system and bones and muscle and it will burn that protein for energy instead so you are just using a very expensive fuel 
on the opposite hand, if you gave your body enough carbohydrates, it could spare it spares protein because the protein doesn't need to be used for energy. Having said that, low carbohydrates diets have been also linked to problems with microbiome and new studies suggest this but also like even short term ketogenic diet i know she's not in a, on a keto diet but it can be uh, low mineral bone mineral density and not, basically even if calories are enough we know that for a female athlete especially carbohydrate availability is really important for hormonal health and bone turnover and so on it's yeah. what i would say i mean if you got I, if you put on some some body fat and I, went on a bulk I, I, I bet that would work i have a question you you stayed in here that you shifted your 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 crossfit training to a more functional bodybuilding training could you give me kind of an idea of what that looks like i wonder too if if maybe backing off the intensity of training in conjunction with also probably feeding yourself a little more so what it, tell me what that training looks like um, well, today I did like a uh, strict press. I did some uh, strict pull ups. Um, and then I did like, what else did I do? I did some dumbbell like rows. Um, I did some Spider Man uh, spider curls and some triceps. How, how many days a week do you work out, including You're gonna cardio? Hate it. It's like every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and uh, let me finish. Sorry. I don't hear it. So, and when you train this way, are you like, standard two three minute rest periods are you doing it more like a circuit are you doing anything in between like jumping rope and shit or is it like like straight bodybuilding training um like today was more relaxed it, it wasn't um today. like too much i was resting i'm trying to like relax in between like sets of like what i'm doing yeah you say that, you say trying is that because you don't normally do that uh it depends on time if i'm rushed then i kind of just do what i have to do but like now i'm just more, i think more aware of just taking that rest period and you know chilling out yeah yeah i mean i think i would i would scale back on the total volume of training so i wouldn't train seven days a week it would look something more like three to four i know that can be dramatic for somebody who does seven days a week so i would slowly peel you down and then I would want you to eat more. You probably, especially understand too, if you're that low of carbohydrates and you are training pretty intensely too. So, I mean, that'll help fuel the workout. And then it's, how long has it been since we've been off the pill? A year. It's yeah. been a year. Yeah, but sometimes, okay, so. Sometimes it takes that long. Yeah. Especially it, if you haven't increased the body fat and calories and, and laid off the intensity. Julia, do, do you, can you share any any blood work that you've done recently? <laughs> any, any other? Yeah, numbers? so that was the thing that um, I, the last, few months I was trying to work on um but she said like my they always freak out she's like your cholesterol is so high and I was like well there's good and bad cholesterol but it's like I think it's like 300 but I I know when you work out a lot um I it like elevates your cholesterol or it's and then I she was saying I have fatty liver too but I know a lot of like athletes like uh like when you work out, it filters through the liver or something. So that's why it might be elevated because I know when I did all the blood work, I, I trained beforehand, mm. fasted, came in, did all the tests, the blood work. And then, but I had like cholesterol, I had, um, thyroid's fine. Um, like all the other things that would show signs of like premenopause are not there. So I wasn't like worried when she said, she's like, Oh, you're fine about that. It's just like, you know, your cholesterol and then, she looked at magnesium and uh that's fine did and you, other things was so it a dutch was it a dutch sorry? test was it a dutch test that you did or was it just a blood test just a blood test okay i want you to try a dutch test because that the problem is with the blood test is because women have hormonal fluctuations and then there's fluctuations throughout the day you're just getting a snapshot with a blood test a dutch test is it's like several mm -hmm. tests throughout the day they also take into account the, you know, where you would be in your cycle, in your cycle potentially, <laughs> although in your case, it might be a little more challenging, but it would give you a better picture. Nonetheless, uh, first off on the cholesterol and fatty liver, um, you could have a genetic polymorphism where you would need to reduce uh, saturated fat intake in particular, because some people 
do have some negative effects from saturated fat. So I don't know what your diet looks like, but if, yeah. if you see a number as high as 300 total cholesterol, I don't know what the other two numbers are, like HDL and LDL, then typically what I would tell a client, by the way, I'd be working with a functional medicine practitioner, so I'm just speaking based off what you told me, is I would have them lower their saturated fat intake, increase the carbohydrates, their fat intake from uh, other sources like uh, avocado, olive oil, fish, and so on, just to see if we can make a difference there. Um, but I don't think that's related to your period. I think your period has mo much more to do with the fact that you're too lean. You're too lean and you're working out too much. Yeah. So if you really want your period to come back quickly, I would take your workouts, I'd move them down to three days a week, and I would take your calories and I'd add about 400 calories. And I would do that for, I bet, I, you know, I would be, I would feel pretty confident saying you would probably get a period within a couple months doing something like yeah, that. 16. Now, this is again, based off of the information you're giving me. And again, I'm not a doctor, uh, but that's what I would, that's where I would go. And again, I would work with a functional medicine practitioner. There, and now here's what you'll probably, now I'm going to speak from the fitness side. Here's where I am confident. Here's what I think you'll notice if you did that. If you bumped okay. your calories three to 400, you dropped your strength training down from every day to three days a week, you're going to get really strong and you're going to build some muscle and your body fat percentage is going to go up a little bit, but you're so lean, you're probably going to like the way it looks and the way you feel. So the, the mental hurdle, I would focus on strength because that's where you're going to see some real positive gains by doing that. Like you're going to get really strong very quickly training just three days a week and bumping your calories. So here's the thing. I know that this is very challenging for people because it was a mental struggle for me as well to increase calories beyond some point. And speaking from my own experience and working with clients with such mental hurdles is that uh, bef un until you try it, until you experience it, you will not believe. And that's a big problem, big issue, because we have, th or this kind of person has that fear of increasing carbohydrates, increasing calories, because it would make them fat. What really happens, like Sal here said or mentioned, your body's system starts to work better. Your recovery improves a lot. And you simply start feeling much better. And when I then speak with the same people, they recognize that looking back, the aesthetics were not as good trade-off for how they feel how they live, how energetic they are for their recovery. And they start enjoying their performance, how much the energy have outside of the gym, how well they recover and they have more freedom in life. So this is what I would like to emphasize here. Carbohydrates are not only about the glycogen storage. They provide our foods that uh, contain carbohydrates are also sources of fiber, uh, certain minerals, vitamins that you would not get otherwise. It provides you a lot of freedom. You don't need to be thinking as much about all the other stuff. And this is what's, I think, the biggest, most important factor. Overemphasizing protein, you are wasting money. You are restricting your diet considerably and just making a worse trade-off. So let's see how it continues. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, because I like I like looking lean, but like before when I was like 145, 147, I was stronger. And then when I got really lean, I was like, man, I'm so weak. Like I can't. I just look strong. Like just, I'm not. Strong just at so all. you know, just so you know, for other people looking in, if you have strength and muscle and your body fat percentage is between 18 to 22%, to everybody else, you look awesome. incredible. Yeah. You look fit, you look sculpted, you have incredible shape. Uh, the problem is your view of yourself is, is gonna be very skewed, it's, uh, it's not objective. So as part of this, I would even recommend avoiding checking yourself out in the mirror. 
I would just, and I'm not weighing yourself, and I would just focus on strength and performance, and I would really remind myself of how I feel. Oh, how's my sleep? How's my libido? How's my energy? And just place your focus, because you're gonna, your filter is gonna be based on what you focus on. And if you look in the mirror mm -hmm. a lot, what you'll notice is, oh, I'm not as shredded. Or if you look at the scale, oh my God, the scale's going up. And then you, you may ignore all those other good signs. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you some other questions, okay? Because this might be a little illuminating. Are there any other signs that you're overtraining, that you're under eating, um, and that you're uh, that you're doing too much? Are you noticing anything? Like women will typically notice changes in skin, hair, hair loss, nails. They'll notice loss of libido. They'll notice disruptions in sleep, weird fluctuations in energy throughout the day. Are any of those things that you notice? Um, at first, when I got off the pill, I was tired. Um, my sleep, I've been working on. Um, I've been taking, like, uh, before bed, magnesium to help. Um, hair is fine. Um, my nails, they've gotten a little bit brittle, but they're okay. Here is a short quote. Hungry body is sleepless body. If your body is looking for energy, you will not sleep much. And I see it consistently. People are trying all the hacks and fitness tips, tricks and supplements to help them sleep. And they do help to a certain extent, but not as much as just increasing your energy intake overall. Sometimes even just carbs. Um. Okay. Yeah, I think everything has been okay for the most part. Okay, but you said you're working on sleep. It sounds like that was an issue. Kind of, yeah. I wasn't uh, sleeping solid, but even now, sometimes I wake up and I have a hard time going back to sleep, but I feel like since I started taking magnesium before bed, um, it's been a lot better. Yeah, so, so um, if you do what I ask, if you do the three days a week, you bump your calories a few hundred, you'll probably notice within a few weeks improvements in all those things. Look, worst case scenario, Julio, okay? Worst case scenario. You'll gain a little body fat and it didn't work. You go back to do what you were doing before. I don't think that's going to happen. I think what's going to happen is you're going to have some huge revelations and you're going to be like, holy cow, I, I, I was totally overtrained. It's hard to see it when you're in it is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like I know I overtrain. I run and I swim too. Oh, uh, in the so, wintertime, okay, I was swimming what, three that's days what I was a week. Yeah, for, Jesus so. Christ. I was looking for that. Yeah, I didn't get it if I asked you. I'm even, I'm even more confident. <laughs> I'm, I'm even more confident. That. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, com it's a combination of just the, the low, low calories, low body fat percentage, and, and intense training. Too much. You, you move the other direction in all three of those, and you're going to see a positive yeah. benefit. Lay off the intensity in the training. Lay off the total volume in it. Increase some calories. Add a little bit of body fat percentage, and I, I feel pretty confident you're going to start seeing a difference. You'll start seeing a difference and feeling a difference within, you know, two to three weeks. Right I mean. away. And I think, like Sal said, within a few months, hopefully we have our period back. Yeah, if you if you want to do this quickly, do what we say. If you want to drag this out, then go ahead and slowly chip away at it. But if you want to make it happen and see what, see what the deal is, uh, let me, what do you do for work? Um, well, I was working retail, but now uh, I enlisted in the Army. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do, do yeah. you, okay, listen, uh, that means you're probably the kind of person that looks at a goal and tackles it. So let me ask you this. Can you do anything for 60 days? Can I? Yeah. Do you have yeah. the will and the, and, okay, and the capacity? Good. Do this for 60 days. It's a challenge. Can you okay. do that? Um, the um, diet, like the training is going to be huge. That's like, right. Not I know. Can you do it? I'll try, but no, I'm already no, stressing no. about it. Go for, go for a walk instead. Listen, Put an audio book in and listen. Go, you know. There is no try. There is only do. That's a famous <laughs> uh, quote from Yoda. But seriously, can you do this? this Will you do this? Again. You're on camera. Everybody's watching you right now. Can you make the commitment? If you can't, that's I understand. But if you can, yeah. do it now. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm going to try. Um, okay. Because I know it's important. I need to get it back as much as. It's not, it's nice not having to deal with that stuff. All right. So. Look, we're going to put you in the forum too, Julia, because I want you to check in with us when you feel like you're slipping backwards. Okay. And then we'll get on there and. and... So here's another thing. If you enlist in army, uh, that's definitely like, this is the tape. I personality go getter, high achiever, and they have this kind of mindset. 
they ignore pain, they are really great at pushing it down. And that gets them into underfueling or not eating enough. And then once they are in that deep hole that they dug themselves into, it's really hard for them to get out of it. Because they are driven by the stress, they allow or value that struggle, they value the hardship. And once you enlist, enlist to the army, you would probably have even more disrupted sleep, less food to go around, you know, all the other things that will not aid your recovery. So this is just probably her personal story. Anyway, this was an excellent coaching. And just to wrap up, low energy availability is really a problem. Even if you are eating enough calories, the macronutrients that you choose play a role. And when you place them during the day, so if you have like one meal a day, that's not really good. You want to spread it throughout the day and get those carbohydrates, not only to restore glycogen stores, but also to uh, stay fit to provide your body with the energy. Stop overemphasizing protein because protein will not save you. It's just an expensive fuel. If you are using protein as your fu fuel, you are in a very bad place. Your body systems starts shutting down. In women, that's usually what she mentioned, disrupted sleep, feeling cold, uh, losing bone mineral density, losing muscle mass and retaining fat mass. So basically gaining body fat percentage, low recovery and host of other signs. Uh, you can check my comprehensive article on low energy availability linked here in the description. And I know that it's very, very challenging for your mindset, for, for the thinking. This is the biggest challenge. It's not about the knowledge, but closing the gap between the knowledge and practice. If you need help, I have a 15 minutes call during which I can help you to uh, set you on the right path, what you need to do, how to do it, give you some quick tips. And if you need further assistance, we can discuss that, but on a different call. You can sign up for this free call also through the link post in the description below. Have a great day.